Hey guys, so I released my latest 3 inch frame, the SLS 3, around a week ago. So I think it's about time I make a little video to try to explain where this design comes from, what the main concepts and um, design solutions behind are. And um, I'm also going to uh, secondly kind of explain to you my build here, why I chose these components and what I think of them. So it all started with this five inch here. This is my SLS five. So SLS for super light specification, five inch frame. This is a 198 gram five inch with those nice 2204 X Nova motors. And a lot of people requested that I take this basic frame concept here and turn it into a three inch. And that's pretty much exactly what I did. What I didn't anticipate is that I would change so much. So I made quite a lot of modifications to get to this uh, SLS free design here. And so let's discuss the, the modifications I made on the frame. So first of all, I went from four millimeter carbon plates for the bottom plate and arms to three millimeters I mean, clearly the arms are pretty short. If you look at one of them, um, there's just no need to use the thick four millimeter carbon like on the five inch. I could make this much slimmer without running into any vibration or stability issues and also save a lot of weight. So my objective here was to go below 30 grams frame weight, including this canopy and the hardware. So three millimeter plates. And also I went from M3 hardware on, on this one to M2. So you can see these are smaller M2 screws. Also I used some with cylinder heads here so they, they don't strip as easily, but it's all M2, M2 nuts here. That saves quite a bit of weight. So I achieved 29 grams uh, including the canopy and hardware, but to be honest, without this extra brace here, um, but it's uh, it's purely optional anyways. Apart from that, the basic frame concept stays the same, so it's still designed around a 20 by 20 stack and a 19 millimeter micro cam, although I have a 14 millimeter nano cam in here, but I hope you can kind of see this. I'm using an, an adapter plate here that comes with the camera. So this fits all regular 19 millimeter cameras. The motor mounts are different. I mean, a five inch uh, has the classic 16 by 16 mounting pattern here with M3 screws and here on the three inch frame because pretty much all motors in that class use this mounting pattern. I have 12 by 12 M2. So. These are the modifications I did on the frame. The canopy is a slight derivative, so I, I modified this part here to fit the M2 hardware, and I had to modify this clamping here because there's less space since the arms are only out of three millimeter carbon. And another thing that didn't exist when I designed this was this new smaller micro axi antenna, which is really cool because um, the, the normal ones, the bigger ones, um, like the Axio, the Lollipop, you see I have one here. Um, they are a bit too big for this frame, so, reps. <laughs> um, if you look at this, they are almost as large as the frame, so it um, would take a lot of uh, structural stability if I make a hole of the right size. So that just wasn't really possible, and also the small one didn't exist, so I went with a linear antenna beginning of uh, this year when I designed this frame. And now I could use this tiny X antenna, which is really cool. So these are the, let's say the main modifications I did on the design to get to this three inch frame, 29 grams. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this. All right, let's look at my build. So first of all, of course, we had to put this on a scale and see how much it weighs. So we have a 139 grams, 140, right about, um, without props, which is not bad at all. I mean, if you weight this with the battery, it is slightly, um, I mean, now it's like slightly below 250 
grams, but um, with props, it's a bit above 250. But um, in that case, that one wasn't my main concern to get under these uh, 250 grams, but it's uh, very easy to manage with this light frame. It's just that I have pretty big motors and these I'm using these 850 milliamp hours R-line batteries. I mean, these are really heavy. <laughs> so, uh, 108 grams for those. Um, but I'm I'm using the, those big beefy batteries because of the motors I'm using. So I'm running these super. Let me try to get these in focus. I'm running the super beautiful RC in power. I'm, I'm not sure actually how to pronounce this RC in power. Uh, 1506 motors. Um, I mean, so most uh, motors in this class are 14 something, 1406, 1407, 1408 motors. These have a slightly bigger stator, um, which I suppose is good because the motor will generate more torque with a wider stator and be more efficient. Higher and more narrow motors usually are very hot and amp hungry. But uh, this one has really high KV for, for S. So this is why I'm using the big batteries. Uh, it's 4,300. It's pretty much the highest 4S uh, three inch motor in that class. Uh, so the highest KV in motors of that class that I know of. So they are indeed pretty amp hungry. I, to be honest, I don't know how exactly the amp draw is because I didn't um, calibrate any current meter in here. Of course, this this is a 20 by 20 Mamba stack. This doesn't have a an actual current meter, and I didn't calibrate the virtual one because I mean to be honest, it it wouldn't find a battery, didn't sag, it all worked out pretty perfectly, so I didn't bother to uh, to calibrate the current meter. RC in 1506 motors, 20 by 20 Mamba stack. This worked out pretty fine. Um, the props I use are. These here, three by three by three HQ props. Those are my favorites so far, because they aren't as aggressive as the other. To be honest, I only tried two different kinds of props. These are 30, 52 gem fan props, and I think these are too aggressive for the high KV. So uh, it felt more balanced with a prop that isn't that aggressive. So I prefer these ones so far. Both of them have. A nice advantage is that um, they're pretty thick and short, so these just don't bend easily. I uh, used this frame here in a race last weekend, so it was really cool. I mean, I used this in the qualifying round and I crashed a couple of times really hard, really smashing this quad straight into gates, and I most of the time I could just continue flying so the props weren't bent, there wasn't any issue at all, I was just bouncing off um, and could continue my run without any issues so um, there was just one thing that was really particular with this combination of quiet, I mean for, for this weight of the quad, these are huge motors and uh, really high KV on 4S and I had the issue that the Betaflight 4.0 rates were completely off in the beginning, so I I had a bit, I, I plugged this um, plugged in LiPo, started test hovering, and I actually had a fly off, so the quad started to accelerate uncontrolled. So I, I disarmed it in like 10 to to 15 meters above the ground. It smashed into the ground. Nothing broke. I did this two or three times, and then um, I decided that the stock PID rates that come on Betaflight 4.0, uh, to be honest, I don't remember which exact version of 4.0 I, I have on this. It's the latest that was available for this board last week. Um, I had a fly off, so that means the the PIDs, the, the P, the I, the D, or the P and the D mainly, proportional and derivative were way too high. So um, what happens in that case if they are too high, the motors kind of overreact and they get into a feedback loop and the quad starts to accelerate more and more. So what I had to do is basically reduce P and D. I reduced them by one third roughly, uh, which was a good starting point for tuning, but 
be aware that if you are building something similar like this, this is a really extreme setup. It's very powerful for its weight and the the stock rates that uh, Beta Flight comes with are not <laughs> the ones you want. So don't, please don't, uh, if you build this frame, please don't test hover it inside. Try to do this outside in a, in a safe place and start with uh, pits that you have reduced by at least 30 to 50 percent and then you can go into tuning so this is obviously not a beginner build if you're a beginner i would recommend uh, you use something that is a bit less aggressive than these motors and um and prop combination other stuff that i use for my build so this is the run cam racer nano and I have to admit it's it's horrible. So it's pretty much the worst I ever used, if I'm honest. It's got this um, over-exaggerated DVR, um, not DVR, um, HDR style of, of picture. So the colors are completely off. Everything looks super unnatural and weird so my first reaction when I looked into the goggles was oh shit what's going on here so at least the stock settings this has are horrible and um, I do much prefer these two here so the the Cadex EOS 2 is pretty good in my opinion some people complain about uh, Jello I, I didn't have this issue so I really like this camera it's also much cheaper than the Nano Racer or from Rumcam themselves. This is just the Nano 2, not the Racer Nano, the Nano 2. This one is also much cheaper. I mean, that one's like 30 euros, 35. And this one is only, um, I think, be less than 15, something like 12, 15. That one's much cheaper and that one's much better. I, I used a 14 millimeter camera here, a Nano Cam, just to shave off a few extra grams. This frame actually does fit almost any regular 19 millimeter micro cam except maybe the um the run cam uh micro eagle but that one's just uh that one's just let me grab one uh, that one's just much bigger so uh one of these very big big sensor cameras might be an issue the cadex Rattel does fit however in my opinion but anyways on one of those builds you on, on those kind of builds you want to be extra light and I don't think you should really consider one of these bigger cameras even if they give you a, a better image quality. What I'm going for is 40 millimeter cameras with this little, they all come with this little plastic adapter inside. Uh, let me see if I have a spare one I can show you. Oh, this is the, the little piece of rubber plastic that all these, at least, I mean, at least the run cam products come with those. I'm not sure anymore about the Cadex, uh, to be honest, I forgot. Uh, but the Runcam ones and the one I recommend here, um, the Runcam Nano 2 comes with this little piece of rubber. You can just insert the camera, this almost weights nothing. And then it works with this canopy. Let us quickly check how much this weights. So the Runcam without the adapter 3.5 grams and this one here 0.6 extra weight 0.6 grams so pretty much nothing this is all fine uh, what more can I say about my build yeah uh, the VTX the VTX is an HD LRC GTX it's kind of a cheap version of the TBS um, Unify Nano it's a 50 milliwatt VTX. For me, it has actually worked really well, never had any issues. I have a pretty good uh, video quality. So my FPV feed is pretty much perfect on this with this antenna. But I have heard a lot of people complain that they had reliability issues with this VTX. So I'm, I'm not really recommending it anymore. And anyways, Ishin has brought out their Ishin Nano VTX which does 400 milliwatt. I'll, I'll link this in the description below and is even a bit smaller and lighter than this one. So this is what I recommend currently or you just get the original TBS um, Unify, uh, I think it's Unify Nano Pro 32 or whatever, um, the, the 400 milliwatt version. My receiver, since I run FreeSky on this one, is the XM. 
So not the XM plus, just the XM. That's the one that just comes with one antenna and then is even smaller than the XM plus and even cheaper. It's just like 10 bucks. That's what I use most of the time for racing. This is more than enough. I have a, it, I just have to watch out since it's only one antenna that have a good antenna placement and then this works perfectly fine. What you also have to keep in mind on this frame, this is all pretty light and also the canopy is, as you see, it's, it's pretty rigid. So it's got enough stability, but if you're really crashing full speed with 150 kilometers an hour into something hard, this thing will give because it's TPU, because it's soft, it will absorb some energy and deform. So you have to be careful to have a little bit of room here between a canopy and the stack so that your components aren't um, damaged. So what I did is I used M2 steel screws and what I really like here, most diatone stacks actually come with these. These little O-rings are in my opinion perfect to mount stacks. I use this on all my builds now, I really like those because they let you adjust the height perfectly and you can build nice and low and have this all super clean in here. The rest of the components, to be honest, the VTX and the receiver, just they're just loose in here. They just fly around. I didn't fix them in any way because they are so small and light. So I think the VTX is like 1.5 grams and the receiver even less. They just don't weight anything. They, they don't go anywhere. You don't need to stick them somewhere. I just leave them loose in here so they have a bit of room to move and absorb energy in crashes. And this has worked very well for me. This, they don't fall out anything. They're just held by the cables. So this works perfectly. Um, what more can I say about me? Oh yeah, I have an XT60 on here. It, it looks huge. Also this, um, that's a 470 microfarad, 35 volt low ESR capacitor. And it also looks huge. Um, to be honest, why did I use this? Um, because the R line, the 850, I think this comes now, there's a new XT30 version, but this comes with an XT60. Oops, sorry, I had to make a little cut here because my SD card is full. So where did I stop? Yeah, the 850 R line batteries 4S, they come with an XT60, so I just put an XT60 here on my build because I, I was really motivated to uh, convert all of this to XT30. So, but it, it works well, all of it adds maybe um, one or two extra grams to have an XT60, but also it doesn't hurt, especially on this build that will have a, a rather high amp draw. So yeah, all in all, um, I'm super happy with this build. It's insanely fast, I have to say. So. I, to, I flew a um, a 5 inch 6S build before I switched to this and it's it's not much um, not much slower to be honest. So I, th I think it feels a bit less locked and in control than my 5 inch build but that's probably because I still have to work on my pit tune. Um, as I said it, it doesn't work well on the stock pit so you have to work on that. Um, if you're not comfortable with pit tuning or a beginner probably use some motors that have less high kv something in the 3800 3900 kv range max will be just fine too on 4s and a little less crazy but overall i'm i'm, I'm pretty happy with this frame it hold up held up very um very well i will show a few crashes i produced last weekend somewhere here in the video and I didn't break anything on this frame, so it's super stable and so far, um, yeah, I hope you find this video useful and like the frame. Don't hesitate to uh, to comment this video if you have any questions or uh, send me a message on, on Thingiverse. Like all of my designs, I put all the files for free on Thingiverse for you to download, so you can simply take those DXF files and send them to a CNC cutting service of your choice and um, get this, this frame made for you. I will also put this up on Armiton Productions so you can have it uh, made to order. All right, so thanks for watching, guys.